One very important point about the marav, about the sickness, we have what's called shart waqi and something that is called shart zahiri. Shart waqi, it's a fixed real condition and then shart zahiri is called what's an apparent condition. A real condition is a condition that if it was not fulfilled, even if you are not aware of it, even if you are not at fault, if that condition is not fulfilled, the act is invalid. What's an example with salah? A real condition, shart waqi. Takbira is, a, is, is one of the parts of salah. We're talking about like preliminary conditions. Tahara. If a person prayed thinking that they had wudu, in fact they had certainty they had wudu, after they prayed they discovered even if 10 years later they discovered, you know what, I didn't do wudu, or my wudu was wrong. What do you have to do with that prayer? Why? Because the, prayer is because the hadith establishes that tahara purity is what type of condition? Real condition or apparent condition? It's a real condition. <laughs> Meaning even if you were not at fault, even if someone misinformed you, even if whatever happened, the point is I did not bring the condition. So the act is invalid. This is called shart waqi. And then sometimes you have a shart dhikri. Shart um, that is zahiri. It's an apparent condition. What's an example of an apparent condition in salah? The dress. The dress. What about the dress? Should be tahir. Should be tahir. What if there is blood or impurity on my dress? If I am aware, I I know it came to my attention that my dress is impure, there's a lot of blood on it or some urine, and I prayed, my prayer is invalid. But if I didn't know, in fact I asked someone, is this pure? Yeah, it's pure. So I prayed and then after I prayed the person says, sorry I made a mistake, I confused it with another dress. That's actually impure. What's the status of my prayer? No, you don't have to redo it. It's valid. Why? I thought the, the purity of the clothes is a condition. It is a condition, but what type of condition is it? It's an apparent condition. Meaning only if you're aware of it and you know it, it's applicable to you. If you were not aware of it, and it was not out of negligence of course, Allah says I accept it. So do you see the difference between shart waqi'i and shart zahiri? Now this by the way is very important to know, because a lot of the conditions if you can classify them as a shart waqi or zahiri, you will know automatically the ruling. For instance, some scholars even believe that killing the animal, slaughtering the animal towards the qibla is a shart zahiri. Meaning, meaning, if I thought the qibla was this way, and I slaughtered the sheep this way, and then somebody told me, hey, the qibla was the other way. Some scholars and rajah say it's halal. But wait a minute, it wasn't towards the Kaaba. Yeah, but it wasn't deliberate. Because the condition of positioning the animal towards the Kaaba is not a real condition, it's an apparent condition. Meaning only if you're aware of it and if you know it. And that's why some scholars have mentioned if there are some Muslim sects who don't believe in slaughtering the animal towards the Qibla is wajib, it's only mustahab, like some Sunnis, they believe that when you're slaughtering the sheep towards the Kaaba, it's mustahab to position it toward the Kaaba. It's not wajib. That's why some scholars have said that that food is halal. But you tell them, wait a minute, it wasn't towards the Qibla. He's like, yeah, but that person in that sect, he doesn't believe it's wajib. So he didn't deliberately violate the law. He was under the impression that it wasn't wajib. And so he mistakenly violated the law. But that condition is applicable here, so it's halal. Just to give you an idea of this discussion. Would that be halal for us? Yeah, no, it's halal for us. That's the idea here, that it's halal for us. Really? Yeah, Sayyid Sistani and some others, they do say this. This is their fatwa. Because they consider this a shart zahiri. What about the dhabiha itself? Meaning cutting the four jugular veins. That's a shart waqi. Meaning if somebody killed a sheep, we thought the person killed it halal. And then it came to our attention, you know what? I didn't fully cut the throat. I cut it halfway. In reality, the food is not halal. So now that you know, you can't continue eating it. 
Because now this is what type of shart? It's a real condition. Shart waqi. So it makes a big difference to know the shart al zahiri and shart al waqi. Let's now apply it in our case. Marav, sickness, prevents you from fasting. So what's the condition here that we can imply? One of the conditions of fasting is not to be sick, right? Can I say that? One of the conditions of fasting is to be free from sickness. Examine this condition, being free from sickness. Is this condition a real condition or an apparent condition? Meaning, I thought I was free from sickness and the fast would not hurt me, would not harm me, it would not increase my sickness or cause a new sickness or prolong the sickness. I thought that for whatever reason I, I was under that impression. I fasted, after a few hours I discovered this is harmful, it caused me sickness. So that condition of being free from sickness, it was what happened to the condition here? It was not observed here because I got harmed from that fasting. So that means the condition of being free from sickness was not observed. I couldn't observe it. But I didn't deliberately do that because when I started the fast, I thought I could fast. Yeah, an hour into it, two hours, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is, this is harmful. Now, here's the question. Is that fast which you fasted a valid fast? Or it's void, bottle, and you have to make it up? It's valid because it's apparent. It's a valid yeah. condition, but if it was a if it was an apparent condition, like you said, yes, it would be a valid fast. But scholars like the author and many other scholars, they say we understand from the tone of the Quran and the tone of the hadith that the condition of being free from illness is actually a real condition, not an apparent condition. That means if you started the fast thinking that you're free from sickness or that the fast will not make you sicker, but then you discovered you were wrong about that. That fast is not accepted that day. It's a void. It's invalid. Because it was revealed to you that the condition didn't apply here. You're not free from the sickness. So you couldn't fast. It's a shart waqi'i. It's a real condition. Now if the scholar would have said, my understanding is that it's an apparent condition. The scholar says, okay, you made a mistake, you didn't know. Fine, that, 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 fat is, that, that fast is acceptable. Now where does this come, become a, really an issue? Not if you discovered like half day, midday. If you discovered after sunset. Haram, the poor guy fasted the whole day. At night he discovered, you know what, I harmed my health. I, I made myself sick. He fasted that day. He put himself through harm, he has to make it up again. Why does he have to make it up? Because that was not a valid fast. The condition wasn't there. Now he didn't know, at night he discovered the condition is there, wasn't there. Just like you prayed the morning prayer, at night you discovered, you know what, I didn't have wudu in the morning. <laughs> you have to repeat that prayer. But I prayed, I know you prayed, but you have to repeat it. Because it's a real condition. So the author does mention this and many maraji' Even though ihtiyat wujubi, some of them they say you have to make up the fast. But this is their fatwa. That we understand this condition to be shart waqi'i, a real condition, not an apparent condition. And see, it makes a big difference. So if you ever fasted in the month of Ramadan, and you fasted the whole day, only to discover, you know what, you didn't have the right to fast. This was not hard. This was, you know, you go to your doctor, your doctor says, look, look at what you did to your health. Look what you did to your fetus, right? You have to make up that day after the month of Ramadan. <laughs> Do you see the technicality of it, of why? 